So the whole process of having a hip replacement is much longer than just having the operation itself. So it involves uh, seeing your surgeon, being examined, having a discussion about whether or not you uh, are suitable for hip replacement or should have a hip replacement. And then once that decision has been made, you then will be seen in the pre-assessment clinics of whichever hospital you're having your surgery, where they'll ensure that you're fit enough uh, that, to try to make you as healthy as you can be before the operation and uh, make sure the operation can be done as safely as possible. Once that's all complete, then the next time you'll be seen is to go into hospital and on the day of surgery, you'll see your surgeon and then your anaesthetist and you can discuss any final um, questions you have with them. And then it's time for the operation. You're taken down to the operating theatre uh, where you, you go into the anaesthetic room and the anaesthetist will administer an anaesthetic. And once that's all done, the surgical team will come and get the patient in the correct position uh, so that they're safely and um, stably position for surgery which usually for hip replacement is on the side lying on the side uh, then the surgical team will sterilize the skin with an antiseptic solution and put on some sterile drapes around the hip and then the operation is ready to be performed uh, an incision is made in the hip area with uh, with a scalpel and then dissection is made down to the arthritic hip joint uh, after this the hip joint is dislocated and the socket of the hip is exposed and the, the socket is prepared, ready to take a, an artificial implant. Once this is in place, then attention is turned to the top of the thigh bone and the top of the thigh bone is shaped in order to fit a new metal implant. And then a trial, a pretend version of the implants are inserted and the hip is put back into joint and various checks are performed to check that the hip is stable, to make sure the leg lengths are, are, are correct. Uh, and once this is done and we're happy with it, then the final implants are inserted and they're usually either inserted and fixed to the bone with an uncemented technique by wedging the implant in place or using cemented implants where cement is used to, bone cement is used to fix the implant. When we're happy with this, the final uh, joint is put back together and then the layers of the uh, muscles, the fascia and the skin are all stitched up from going deep going up to the level of the skin and a dressing is put on. The patient then goes into the anaesthetic room where they start their recovery. Hip replacement surgery is recommended for patients generally with painful arthritic hip joints that are giving them problems with day-to-day -day activities, uh, stiffness, uh, functional limitations such as putting on shoes and socks and giving them pain which can't be controlled with simple painkillers. Uh, there are other conditions that need hip replacement such as a conditions that affect the blood supply to the to the hip joint and also in certain cases of broken hips. Um, but by and large, it's for patients with arthritic painful hips who have tried to treat them without surgery with painkillers and lifestyle measures, walking sticks, losing any, any weight that they need to. And once those treatment methods have failed, then the next step would be a hip replacement if it's appropriate for them. The ideal candidate for hip replacement is a, a motivated, compliant patient uh, who's been who's had hip arthritis for some time, who's been trying all the non-surgical treatment options like painkillers, physiotherapy, walking sticks, and lifestyle factors, and uh, and once those uh, more simple methods of treatment are not working anymore then the time might be to consider a hip replacement. Initially, after a hip replacement, the patient's preoperative arthritic type pain goes away very quickly, but they swap this for the pain of having, ha having had the operation. 
and this will need painkillers um, for a short period of time but will fade gradually over the first three to six weeks In the first two weeks it's important to keep the wound dry and keep the dressing in place and then after two weeks the wound will be healed and the dressing can be removed initially after surgery the patient will be uh, walking using either uh, two crutches or two walking sticks for safety and stability because the hip will feel uh, weak and painful to start with and then once their walking is getting better they can then progress on to using a single stick or a single crutch and then by about six weeks most patients are getting rid of their walking sticks and crutches altogether and starting to walk in a more normal fashion uh, some discomfort around the hip can be expected for three three to six months but generally speaking uh, by this stage patients are much better than they were before their operation firstly the majority of patients uh, are pleased with the outcome of their hip replacements more than 90 percent of patients have no problems there are a small number of patients who have problems either around the time of surgery or after surgery. And many steps are taken to try to minimize the risks of complications. However, they can't be completely eradicated. Uh, some of the serious complications of hip replacement surgery include problems such as infection, which can be, be very difficult to manage, uh, blood clots in the legs traveling to the lungs and for this reason patients are given some medication to thin the blood slightly for about a month after the operation. They're also given some antibiotics at the time of the surgery. Uh, during a hip replacement it is possible to alter the length of the leg. We always aim to get equal leg length but in some situations there may be differences in leg length. Most patients get used to this very easily and it becomes the new normal, but some patients can have some problems with leg length discrepancy. Uh, the artificial hip uh, can dislocate. This is a rare complication, uh, but if it happens, it can be as a result of a fall or a twist or an accident, in which case the hip can be manipulated back into place. And we hope that it doesn't happen again. If the patient has a hip that is dislocating on numerous occasions, then sometimes further surgery is needed. There is a small risk of fractures around the bone, which can happen either during the operation or later on in life in patients with hip replacements, and this can be problematic needing more surgery. In the long term, uh, hip replacements can wear out and the implants can work loose, which can need redo surgery. But the main message is that the majority of patients are pleased with their hip replacements.